everybody, and welcome to another GPower 3.1 tutorial. In this tutorial, we are going to focus on uh, the F-Test test family, but we're going to talk about the two linear multiple regression statistical tests and how to calculate our a priori sample size. So first, we're going to do fixed model and r squared's deviation from zero. So whether or not we've got a significant r squared in a fixed model. And then we'll follow that up in this video with fixed model, but we're going to do uh, what would be a hierarchical model where, or a block design model where we are adding predictors uh, into the model one at a time or two at a time or whatever and determining R squared increase. So that delta R squared and whether or not that increase or decrease in this case, we're going to specifically talk about increase is significant. And so we will do that. So let's first do a fixed model R squared deviation from zero. Now you can see here, effect size is F squared, Cohen's F squared. OK, so this is slightly different than Cohen's F that we did for the ANOVAs in this tutorial series. And so we're going to have to determine that. So if I leave that there, you can see that F squared has a slightly different effect size conventions because it's an F squared. The numbers are going to be smaller than what you would see for Cohen's D or even Cohen's F. Cohen's F squared is a squared calculation, kind of like R squared in this case. And so smaller numbers are going to be um, the case, and that's why a small f squared effect size is still just 0 0.02. And so let's look for the 0 0.02. Um, and we can determine this by either grabbing the correlation coefficient, rho squared, the squared multiple correlation, okay, so that would be rho squared or r squared. You can calculate that, and we can put that in there too. So that's the co correlation coefficient, or we can grab it from our predictor correlations. So number of predictors is two because I put that in there. And so if I change that to five, this should, if I close the drawer and open it again, it will change to five. Again, if you change it here, so you can't change it. Oh, we can change it here, actually. That's, that's kind of true. Um, but you have to select the radio button. But if you want to change it uh, over here, you have to close the drawer and reopen it. Okay, so just be aware of that. Um, you have to specify the matrices here in order to use from predictor correlation. So this is quite a bit more involved. So you can either specify the correlation with the outcome. So what the value is, um, then you would hit calculate row squared. And that will give you that answer there. So if I correlate, uh, so if I do 0.25, um, negative 0.4, uh, mm, 0.35, I don't, I'm just adding in information here, negative 0.02, and then 0.5, sure. And then so now that I have those numbers in there, apologies because dark mode doesn't really work here. Um, so we have these correlations with the y variable. If we're going to calculate rho, you, uh, rho squared, sorry, you will see that I have a 0.5954. And then you could add that in. It will. But should have put that in there. Okay. I'm not entirely sure. I specified, oh, I think you have to actually go in here now and specify the correlation matrix, which is uh, annoying. But in any case, uh, oh, I see. You could use this value here. Sorry. Do this, this value here to change it to 0.59. Oops. 0.59. Well, let's see what happens if we put that in. Well, the effects F squared is 1.4. So that's a massive effect. You can imagine that'll probably only need like three people. But so we're not going to do that. Of course, that's unhelpful. So let's close that drawer because we're not going to do it. And we're going to put in 0.02 because we're going to calculate small effect size. Power is going to be alpha and power are going to be as we have always put it, 0.08 as convention, uh, 0.05 as convention. And sure, we'll leave the number of predictors as five. So this is trying to, this is, you're attempting now with your model to find an R squared value that is significantly different from zero. So what is our total sample size that calculate? And it looks like we're going to need 647 people in our regression equation to find an R squared that is significantly different from zero with an effect size of 0 0.02. Now, if I increase this to 0.15, we watch this one, you can see that it significantly drops down. And now we only need 92. That's amazing. That's amazing. Okay. So that's how you do R squared deviation from zero for a linear uh, MR uh, model. So let's do R squared increase. There we go. Total number of predictors versus total number of tested predictors. Okay, so how you determine um, what goes in what block. We're still looking for F squared, though. Okay, now uh, to calculate F squared, uh, and again, the conventions are going to be the same. Come, you can either calculate it from a special effect. So one of your predictors is going to have um, theoretically an increase or a decrease in R squared uh, in the model in total, right? So if you have an, with your first predictor, you have an R squared of 0.3. Well, if you add in the second predictor into the model, what's R squared going to change to? Is it going to change to 0.4? So that it, delta R squared being a um, 0.1 increase there. So you would put in that information here, or you can get, grab your partial R squared from your uh, data or from a, a source, a primary source that has their, their, uh, their data in there, uh, you know, their, their output, their, their results in the document. Right. Um, we're going to ignore this. As I have mentioned before, we are going to try to we're going to try to find a 0.10 effect size 
uh, and then we're going to do 0.80, okay, as our power, error probability, okay. So now, n total number of predictors, we're just going to use our five. Number of tested predictors, however, because this is an R squared increase, is going to be less than five. So we are going to, in, in this case, how I believe I'm reading this is that in model one, we are going to have three predictors, okay? Because as we here, we're going to say two is the number of tested predictors. So those first three in model one are going to give us our base R squared. Um, maybe these are control variables like age, uh, weight, uh, IQ, gender, whatever. So we're controlling for variances there. <clears throat> and we are going to try to find these two others and see what the model does when we add two more predictors into the, into the mix. So we're going to do three first, and then we're going to do the two testing. Block one, block two kind of thing. Model one, model two. Okay. And so when we calculate that, it looks like we only need 100 people. Okay. We only need 100 people for model two. Okay. For model two. Model two will give us enough information um, with 100 people to give us an actual power value of 0 0.80. It'll be enough people on top of the information that we got in model one. I would suggest, this will be my suggestion, is to do R squared deviation from zero with your first three prediction, or with your first three predictors, take that sample size value that you got, and then do the R squared increase based on your theoretical perspective, why you are doing it in a block design and not just entering them all in at once, and then add that sample size and add those two together. That would be my, uh, that would be my uh, suggestion. It doesn't hurt to get more people, to have more people. Of course, this, we're looking for a 0.1 effect. Now, if, if I change that to 0.02, you can see that I'm going to need 485 people to find that effect. Um, to find that R squared increase of these two additional predictors. So that's how you do linear multiple regression a priori sample size calculations in GPower. If you like this video, please consider leaving a like. If you like this content, consider subscribing for more of these kinds of stats tutorials and other psych videos on this channel. That's going to be it for this video. Thanks for watching.